Hello and welcome to another box of gaming tutorial for Ticket. Yeah. So last time I showed you how to make a very sort of primitive automation system that um, had some little bits of overflow protection in it. And this time we're going to do it a little bit better. So if you're on a multiplayer server, they're going to love you if you make this instead of the previous one. Now we're mainly going to use the red power mod instead of industrial craft, although we are still using the industrial craft, you know, furnaces uh, and a macerator. But instead of, sorry, I should say the build craft pipes, we're going to use red power tubes. And this is the third time I'm recording this video as my uh, my computer seems to want to freeze every time halfway through. So I have most of the items already, but I'll show you anyways what to make. Uh, so can I can I condense this? No. Okay, let's 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 trash it because why not? So the first thing you probably want to make is a screwdriver, and a screwdriver is just made with some iron and a stick, very easily. And this is the exact same thing as a wrench in industrial craft, so you can rotate objects and all that sort of good stuff. So from there on, the main thing you need to have is red power tubes. Uh, and they're called, uh, where, where are they here? Redstone tubes. Now you make these by having some pneumatic tubes and some redstone. And the pneumatic tubes are some brass and some glass. Now the brass is copper and tin in an alloy furnace, which is this sort of thing. And you make that by just having eight bricks in a hollow square. So that's very easy. That's just made from clay in the, uh, in the furnace. So once you make these um, redstone tubes, and I should probably explain uh, the difference between these pneumatic tubes and the redstone tubes, is that the pneumatic tubes, um, they are the same as the buildcraft pipes pretty much. Like they just transport items back and forth, whilst the redstone pipes, and you can probably see it here as well, they have the redstone included in them. So you can actually transport a redstone signal through them, which is incredibly handy and, and time saving and space saving, so that's cool. <coughs> so once you have those, you're also going to need some redstone torches, which you know how to make. Although you don't need them, but it's easier. Uh, a lever if you want to have it. And a timer. Now the timer is probably the most complicated thing. But it's also um, pretty cool. So you remember those vanilla Minecraft timers where you would have repeaters in a circle and then we keep going. And then it's just, it's just, just lag inducing and it's horrible to make. And big as well. So the timer is made by uh, primarily with these stone wafers. Now a stone wafer is very easy to make. All it is is you have a furnace, doesn't matter what furnace, and you chuck some stone in there. Not cobblestone, just stone. And that will make it into these stone wafers. Very easy. So, oh, what else? I'll show you the timer. I have it here. Look at that. It's quite complicated, isn't it? Well, it's not really, because these are just stone wafers, which I just show you how to make. These are just stone wafers with a redstone dust on top. And then we have, so there's three of those. Then we have two of the anodes here in the, in the bottom corners. And they're just made by three stone waves and four redstone. And you can just pause the video if you want, um, if you want to keep these recipes, but they're pretty easy. And then we have two more, which is the pointer and the cathode. Now the cathode is just a redstone torch on a wafer. And the last one is the pointer, which is a wafer, a torch, and some cooked stone. Easy. Now that makes you this timer. And the timer is pretty cool. Um, and I'll show you how it works. So you can put it on the floor, just like that. And you can see any time this, this thing goes full circle, it emits a redstone signal. Now if you right click on it, you can change the interval, so now it's 2 seconds, you can set it all the way up to 0.2 of a second, so look at that, that goes fast. <laughs> now I would be a little bit careful with the faster speeds, as they can actually break machines. So, I don't know, 0.5 would be the fastest I would go, just for security purposes. Now the cool thing about these times is you can actually place them on walls as well, which is pretty awesome. I'm actually not sure if you can place them upside down. No, no, no you can't. Oh, you can actually, not on stairs, but you can. How awesome is that? Now you might be thinking, 
but I can't put redstone dust on the ceilings and the walls. Well, you can if you make these red alloy wires. And you do that by having these ingots, and the ingots are made with redstone and iron or copper, doesn't matter. Actually, I think you can make it in many different ways. No, that's about it. And, and you put those in the alloy furnace as well. So cool, we have all those. Now, the main thing to note is that Red power and industrial craft do not really work too well together. Now, these are also red power tubes and they go into the top of this macerator and that works. But to pull items out, you're going to need a machine like this one, which is a trans uh, transposer. Uh, there's other machines as well. You can use a retriever, you can use a filter, but this is the most basic one. And anytime this gets a redstone current, it'll pull one item out. So this is set at probably 0.4 or so. So it pulls an item out every single time and there's a tube behind this. Now, to make those, and I have three already, you have some cobblestone at the top and in the bottom corner there's some wood, a piston and some redstone and that makes you a transpose. So very cheap to make, very easy. And we need three because we need one for each item. Uh, sorry, for each machine or chest or anything that we want to pull items out of. So at this point, we want to have one for the chest, one for the macerator, and then one for the furnace, and it puts it into the chest. So three in total. Now that's just an iron furnace, so that's just powered by coal, and I put a generator under here just so we can see. Um, you know, it's more clear to not have any clutter. So let's start. So the transposer, first on the chest. Now. I'll just put these in the wrong place first so you can see. This has to be facing the chest or the machine that we want to pull items out of. Now on the back side of that is this little circle in the middle. That's where the items are going to come out of. So if you place it down wrongly, just use a screwdriver. Oh, that's it. Perfect. Now you put a, um, you connect that with redstone tubes. And we want them to go into the macerator from the top because it has to go into the top slot. And then we do the exact same thing. So we put a transposer and that's pointing in the correct way. We hook that up to a furnace. Noink. And then out of the furnace. Into the chest. Easy as that. That's pretty much it. That's done. Now we just uh, put a timer down. And we set it to, uh, let's set it to maybe, um, set it to the fastest. Why not? Actually, maybe not. That's <laughs> bit overkill. Uh, put on 0.5. Connect this with redstone dust and look at that, that's working already. And that's fast as well. You don't need multiple redstone engines to make this fast. So let's connect them all up. Oh. So these um, tubes, as you can see, they light up briefly along the whole way. They power anything that's connected to it as well once they get power. So it's very nice. Now the main difference with these and the buildcraft pipes and why these are much better in, in multiplayer and also in single player is this transposer only picks up items out of this chest if there's a valid destination. Now what does that mean? Currently it's getting all the gold. Well it was, now it's done. And there was a spot available here so it puts it in here. So that's why it pulls it out. But at the moment the next item is iron and iron can't go anywhere because this is already full so it actually doesn't put it out, so it stops a lot of lag from all these items just sort of floating around and the same works here as well, so this works brilliantly now if we add say that's why I put this chest here if we connect the same tube to this chest suddenly this transposer says hey there's another place, a valid place for me to put this iron, I'm gonna put it there which is this chest so if you want to have a good setup like I have inside, you can just have multiple macerators and you just connect the same tube to all of them and it'll check the first one, if it's full it'll put in the second one, if that's full put it in the third one, if that's full put it in the fourth one etc. And if they're all full it, it won't pull any items out at all. So that's your basic setup, pretty pretty awesome. Uh, it's pretty cheap to make as well, it's probably a little bit more complicated than Buildcraft but it's just so much more small and, and, and mobile you know. Um, and you can do really cool stuff with this. You can make this much smaller, of course. And you can paint these, but I'll show you that in another episode.
Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.